Damian Lillard established himself as a franchise player following the departure of LaMarcus Aldridge. In a year many expected the Blazers to bottom out, they ended up making the playoffs off of the contributions of a 25-year-old Damian Lillard fully coming into his own. This season ended in a second round exit, but there was plenty to build on with the caliber of player that Dame was. But over the next six seasons, well, they still are at best a second round exit roster, and their prospects going forward have not been good in a long time. So this begs the important question. Why in the goddamn fuck is Damian Lillard still associated with this godforsaken dumpster fire of a franchise? That time and time again has shown nothing but profound incompetence at every turn of Damian Lillard's tenure. Well, if you ask the man himself, he would say loyalty. In fact, he would say it constantly. I'm waiting for us to struggle and I'm just gonna be like, all right, that's it, I'm right. leaving. Uh, that's just not who I am. Is it safe to say you ain't thinking about going anywhere else? Why would I be? I mean, I don't even think it makes sense at this point. For me, I think the, the loyalty part, that's just who I am. Anything other than loyalty ain't worth it, you know? They wanted me to jump ship, rip city back in action, not me. Look at my demeanor, see loyalty in my background. Dame and his commitment to the Portland Trail Blazers has been a big topic of discussion in the NBA for a while now. And it's something I've talked about a million times on this channel. With recent moves made by the Blazers, this conversation has sparked up again. However, having participated in this conversation over a dozen times now, it's very clear to me that the very concept of loyalty in the NBA is worthy of a deep looking into. Welcome to NBA Deep Dive. The first thing to look at in regards to loyalty in the NBA is where NBA players might get this idea that they're supposed to be loyal to the franchises that they are drafted to, to begin with. This traces back to the very beginning of the NBA. Now a lot of older fans and even players like to shit on the modern generation for the general lack of loyalty to franchises by comparison to how it used to be. However, I would argue the only reason loyalty was so prominent was a combination of league rules at the time as well as societal standards around worker empowerment at the time, where the idea of working for the man with little resistance wasn't just accepted but embraced. Back then, bullshit propaganda about how working every day of your life until you die is a good thing was commonplace. Basically, I'm saying all you guys are bootlickers. The American dream. Break your back and never develop a good relationship with your children so that you can get screwed out of your pension and die a miserable old man. Loyalty had less to do with players not wanting to move and more so to do with it just not being logistically possible and it being socially stigmatized. Free agency as we know it now did not exist early on. In fact, NBA players had to fight for the right to any level of free agency at all by protesting the 1964 All-Star Game. Even then, it would still essentially just be restricted free agency where a player's comings and goings would be ultimately determined by the team. Until 1988, when Tom Chambers became the first unrestricted free agent in NBA history. Now, this is not to say that player movement didn't exist whatsoever, but back then the leverage was dramatically in the favor of the franchise over the player. So, when people talk about loyalty from past generations of the NBA, when it wasn't even possible to be an unrestricted free agent until damn near 1990, it's kind of bullshit. It's like when older generations are confused why young people today complain about housing and college. It's because the shit is not the same as it was in your prime, grandma. College is not a nickel and a four bedroom house is not 95K. Players did not move around like crazy in the past because they were beholden to rules that only existed in the past. But even after unrestricted free agency became a thing, it isn't as though a switch was flipped and now every star player 
player was on the verge of leaving their respective teams. As for why, well, for starters, there was just the simple initial hesitation. While some might jump on a new rule the second it's established, others who are more comfortable with the status quo will probably just look at it from a distance. Either because they are already comfortable with the status quo or they fear the ramifications of breaking from the mold. But the second reason, even if it was technically allowed, there was quite a stigma around players who exercised that option, especially star players. Hell, there was a lot of criticism for players historically who asked to be traded. Charles Barkley was criticized a ton for how he left the Sixers. Now, there were details about that that made Charles look unfavorable even by today's standards, but a lot of criticism was simply because he was not sticking with the team that drafted him, as was customary of most superstar players. Even in a case like Shaq, when he left the Orlando Magic for the Lakers, when it was well understood that the Magic offered him an insultingly low ball offer, he was still kind of criticized for that. Even when the fan base in a media poll said Shaq was not worth what he wanted, public perception almost always leans in the favor of the franchise over the player. The general public tends to push back against a player breaking from the mold, they like their league the way it is, and it's easier to criticize an individual than an established system. But as we all know, this was fundamentally changed by one decision. The answer to the question everybody wants to know. LeBron, what's your decision? Um, in this fall, man, it's, it's very tough. Um, in this fall, I'm gonna take my talents to South Beach and uh, join the Miami Heat. From the moment a player of LeBron's caliber left a team on his own damn accord, it became a lot easier for other players to do the same thing. Now, the level of criticism that LeBron got for this move was unprecedented. I realize a lot of people like to claim it wasn't because he did it, but how he did it, but really to me that's just an excuse, and either way LeBron was going to become one of the most hated athletes of all time just with this one decision. Because no one gets hate like someone who breaks from the status quo. No one gets hate like somebody who creates their own path and goes against the grain. But that brought us into the often criticized era of player movement. And from that very moment, it was now a question asked of every star or superstar caliber player. Are you going to stay? The natural assumption for so many years was as a star player, they were more than likely going to stick around with the franchise. And if they didn't, it was almost always because of the team's decisions, not theirs. But 22 years after unrestricted free agency became a thing and Tom Chambers broke the logistical barrier of player movement, LeBron James broke the social stigma around it. And though it took some time, decisions like this became accepted. And from that moment forward, players were essentially split into the two camps of those who were loyal and those who were not. And thus was created a non-stop clash of the old school mentality and the new school mentality. And that all brings us back to Damian Lillard. Dame very much falls in the camp of the old school mindset of loyalty. Loyalty isn't just something he subscribes to, it's something he takes pride in. He treats it as though it's basically a damn personality trait. You know, it's like annoying 20 year old white girls with the office. But where exactly would Dame get this idea of loyalty being so important in the NBA? It could be in part something that he just grew up with. Dame is very much a family man and perhaps it's just an inherent value that supersedes basketball and he has said as much in regards to the influence his father has had on him as it relates to loyalty. Loyalty outside of the concept of just a game and reaching into real life is a lot more broader and the criticism that can be levied against it is very much a case-by-case -case basis. Be loyal to your nice mom, sure, but if you're loyal to an abusive family member or partner or friend at a certain point, you shouldn't be loyal to them because they haven't reciprocated that loyalty and it should be a two-way street. But I think where Dame gets this idea specifically in an NBA sense comes from the players that he grew up idolizing. Damien's favorite players growing up were Allen Iverson, Michael Jordan, and Kobe Bryant. And looking at them, they all essentially might as well have been one team guys. Yes, technically AI 
played for like four other NBA teams and Michael Jordan played for the Wizards, but we don't talk about that, okay? It's like Dwayne Wade on the Cavs. We're just gonna collectively agree it didn't happen. But I think that crop of players that he idolized in particular really makes it easier to understand where he's been in his career and the decisions that he's made. Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant both built their legacies somewhat on the fact that they stayed loyal to the franchises that drafted them. Now, Kobe did technically ask for a trade in 2007, but we don't need to talk about that. But in the case of Kobe, his legacy isn't just that he was as good as he was. His legacy is enshrined in the Lakers. For many people Dame's age and even younger like my age, when you think Lakers, you think Kobe Bryant. Even with the rich history that team has, the Lakers are Kobe, as far as I'm concerned. And as for Mike, I mean that one's obvious. Because the Bulls don't have some rich history previous or after MJ, he's even more associated with the franchise itself. Contrast that to all-time greats who might have stuck around in one spot and earned a legacy there but overall was a player that moved around a lot. Shaq does not have his name synonymous with a franchise, nor does Charles Barkley, and hell, if Cleveland wasn't such a poverty franchise outside of LeBron James, they probably wouldn't even be synonymous with him just because of how much he moved around. Luckily, all he has to compete with is fucking Mark Price. With the examples of Kobe and MJ from a ring standpoint are very much examples of success. Both of them stuck with the team that drafted them, and they won 11 championships between the two of them. Loyalty worked pretty heavily in their favor in the long run. Where it gets interesting is Allen Iverson. Because if we're looking at a championship run as the benchmark of success, in that case, AI was a failure in that regard. And this was in no small part due to his loyalty, his unwillingness to jump ship in the prime years that he wasn't getting any damn help around him. Iverson, I actually think, has a ton of parallels to Damien when you really look at it. They're both small guards, Iverson obviously smaller than Lillard, who are freakishly athletic, really talented shot creators with questionable defense, and even as guards, they were far from pass first, but still good enough playmakers. And even from a personality standpoint, I'd say they're pretty similar. They have a pretty similar swagger with their on-court demeanor. But AI is someone who has gone down as one of the best players to never win a championship, and that is a huge part of his legacy. However, I did just mention... Allen Iverson does have a legacy. In fact, he has one of the most substantial legacies in the history of sports, and just like his failures are in no small part related to his loyalty, the exact same things can be said about his success and the legacy that he does have. The legacy of Iverson is intertwined with his loyalty to the city of Philadelphia. That man is loved and embraced by that city, and for all Allen meant to the league culturally on top of the admiration generations of players have for the guy, like Damian Lillard, like LeBron James, and that is no small accomplishment. While he might be a failure from the winning a championship metric, he's a success in just about every other metric. Say Iverson in the middle of his prime changed teams like three times in total, and he actually got a ring as let's say a second option on like the Lakers or something. Do you think Thank you. Allen's legacy is as big as it is today. If someone like Reggie Miller did something similar, is his legacy as large and unique and standing alone as it is having been an Indiana Pacer from game one to game 1,389? So for Damian Lillard, for the players that he grew up idolizing, he watched them either get success from loyalty championship-wise or just for being synonymous with the city and having a huge reputation there. And it's safe to say that Dame has built a not dissimilar legacy in Portland to that of AI in Philly or Miller in Indiana. Now, I realize the direction and the way I'm presenting this is almost giving the impression that I'm 
fully on Damian Lillard's side of loyalty here, but that's not necessarily the case. Because for one thing, Dame's legacy in Portland is all but secure. The odds of that team reaching higher heights than they already have is virtually non-existent, and Dame having been there so long and earned such a reputation with that city, I don't think there is a single Blazers fan that would be mad at him for leaving. I'm sure some douchebag would burn his Dame jersey on Twitter purely for the attention of it all, but that's about it. But separate from that, at a certain point, a franchise no longer deserves your loyalty. In some instances, a franchise never truly deserved your loyalty from the beginning. Look at DeMar DeRozan with the Toronto Raptors. That guy could not have shown that franchise more loyalty if he tried. If it was up to him, he was going to spend his entire career in Toronto and retire there. He'd said as much multiple times, but given the opportunity to improve the roster and take a swing for someone who didn't even want to be there, the Raptors shipped him off to what ended up being NBA purgatory for the next three seasons. The guy was chilling, eating Jack in the Box apparently, and then suddenly the team that he had spent the first nine years of his career on was no longer his team. This trade came completely out of the blue for him. So in this case, a player gave a franchise the the loyalty and that franchise flipped that player on a dime at a moment's notice but the thing is i don't think it was wrong of toronto to do that by any stretch it wasn't really working out with demar Derozan, and what were they going to pass up an opportunity to get a generational talent in toronto if i'm masai Ujiri, i don't really care that much about the loyalty you gave this franchise i'm gonna do what's best for the team and that's not really wrong from a business perspective and as anyone would tell you the NBA is a business and I think the general shift and loyalty from NBA players came from the realization that loyalty from franchises was very rarely reciprocated and that's where the problem lies and really this conversation sprouts up to begin with the generation of players who started being disloyal to franchises did not break some system that was fair and as it should have been, they just simply evened the playing field. It's not unlike many things in capitalism where workers are expected to go this extra mile without ever actually having any incentive from their employers. When I say a lot of the ideals of loyalty come from an older generation, this is exactly what I mean. The idea that this newer generation is ungrateful for the things they get is bullshit and looking at society and the NBA through these rose tinted glasses that are separate from reality. A corporation does not deserve your loyalty or trust unless they go out of their way to earn it, which frankly they're just not going to do 9 times out of 10. In the case of these franchises, their loyalty to you only goes as far as your ability to sell tickets for them. If that's gone, you're really not going to see all that much loyalty. Rarely is your team going to do you right. Here's a question that might be more important than you realize. How many role players are loyal to franchises? How often are we saying a franchise betrayed a player by trading them when that player is like Montrez Harrell? It's not non-existent. There's the likes of Udonis Haslam with the Heat or Nick Collison with the Thunder. But in general, this idea of loyalty to franchises only really exists with good to great players. The reason for this is they are not disposable like role players are. They are not a dime a dozen. Getting a star or superstar player associated with your franchise is really, really important and thus keeping them around becomes important. But how much it matters to keep a player on your team is relative to their talent. And because of that, then loyalty becomes an expectation just because you're really good. Like the amount of loyalty expected of you is entirely determined by how much they actually need you and then if you're not down for that arrangement that player then gets criticized for not being loyal does that not entirely cheapen the very concept of loyalty if it's hinged entirely on how good the player is the concept of loyalty is tied entirely to the value you bring as an asset as a star that sells tickets and wins games at that point 
loyalty, which is a deeply human and personal concept, gets perverted into this ugly business practice. And the idea of loyalty in this way is merely a manipulation to keep star players around. It's a business controlling an asset with an asinine warped perception of a deeply human concept. That's what loyalty looks like from a franchise perspective, and that's why it's expected of star level players. To me, that's kind of gross, right? Is it not kind of fucked up? If the loyalty provided to you and the loyalty expected of you is entirely contingent on how good at basketball you are, at that point, it's not loyalty. That's like when a parent only really loves and supports their child if they have good grades and are successful. At a certain point, that loyalty and that love is superficial and fake. So on the other end of the spectrum, if loyalty is not reciprocated in the man of, let's say, having competent management that trades Norman Powell for more than a bag of Fritos and a copy of Boss Baby on Blu-ray. That type of loyalty? To what point does Dame owe his loyalty to the Blazers? Loyalty is one thing, but blind loyalty is another. Blind loyalty will get you taken advantage of. It will have you wasting away years of your life for an abstract concept that at the end is meaningless. I mentioned earlier from an interpersonal sense, loyalty to an abusive partner or a family member. In an instance like that, I am not going to praise your loyalty. I might be sympathetic, but I'm not going to look at someone who's been abused and be like, yeah, you go girl, defend your man, even though you have a black eye. Like, no, loyalty is not always good, especially in that instance. That's an extreme example, obviously. Loyalty that is not benefiting you in any way and is actually actively harming you isn't even loyalty anymore. It's fucking Stockholm Syndrome. But this brings me to my final question. To what extent is it a fan's place to say whether or not a player should or should not be loyal? To what extent is it overstepping a boundary and telling a man what to do with his life when it really isn't your business? Even if you are right, it's not necessarily your place to say. Well, this is where it gets tough because at this point, Damian Lillard has made his position extremely clear. I make fun of him for constantly talking about being loyal, but he only constantly talks about it because he's constantly asked about it. And for him and the many Blazers fans that support him, they are tired of the constant prodding around this situation when he has made his position extremely clear. On one hand, I get that side's perspective. On another, I understand as someone who hates seeing a player as talented as Dame not win a ring, why you would still beg for him to leave that situation. It might be a personal decision, but it's also a very public decision with massive ramifications around the league as a whole. So the discourse surrounding it, I would not go anywhere near as far as claiming it to be immoral, but I do understand where the frustration comes from on the other side. Where I think think the extremities of the push for him to leave the Blazers actually comes from is the social media age. This might be a whole other deep dive down the road, but I feel like the discourse around the game, for better or worse, mostly worse if we're being honest, has fundamentally changed because of social media, more specifically Twitter. And the way we talk about legacy and things like that is more in the moment than it has ever been. Rather than appreciating a legacy as as it was after the fact, instead we're debating what move a player should make as they're quite literally in the middle of creating their legacy. While I'm certain these conversations and these types of pushes have happened before, with the advent of social media they have never been louder and thus never more heard. And that makes the noise and the pressure a lot more prominent in Damian Lillard's ear than it would have been for Allen Iverson or Reggie Miller. I don't know really what point to end this topic on because unlike the last couple of deep dives I don't have some strong takeaway. I personally view loyalty and business as complete bullshit but I'm also not going to tell you to look at it that way because that comes down to personal preference. Ultimately I would love for Damian Lillard to leave the Portland Trailblazers and hopefully win a ring. Dame is a great player and as a fan of basketball I do not like seeing great players waste their time on small minded 
minded and competent teams. However, I also accept that this is Damian Lillard's decision to make, and if this is the one that he's going with, then I have to accept that. But seriously though, you're not actually going to stay in Portland, right? Like, are you kidding me? Why the fuck do they owe- Why do you owe them your loyalty? They haven't done anything good for you for the last decade. Why won't you get the fuck- While this one was quite disjointed, I don't even fully know what that was, I just kind of had some shit to ramble about, I suppose. This video was originally supposed to be a video talking about player comparisons, but after the traded line that the Portland Trailblazers had, I had this topic pop up in my head and I haven't been able to get it out, so I just had to push this video out first and then the next one is probably going to be that player comparisons one. Also, to speak for the dehumanization of athletes video that I keep talking about, I'm just going to not give that any kind of deadline and when it comes comes out, it comes out. I have plans for my channel in the future that may or may not happen, and if they do, then that video would be a great launching point for the change. So until that time potentially happens, which would be around the off season, I wouldn't have any kind of anticipation for it. I don't want to rush that topic, and every time I've sat down to write it, I just have trouble with it. I know it's something that I have in here that I need to get out, but it's going to take some time. Also, real quick, I need to promote, uh, I have a podcast, and if you, you might have been around for it like nine months ago when it last was up but me mojo99 who's another nba youtuber and rudy who edits the non deep dive videos on this channel to be clear we have a podcast and it is relaunching rebranding and it's going to be live every sunday and wednesday at 10 30 p.m so go check that out when it comes out it's going to be out this saturday or this sunday which is right after this video goes up so it'd be much appreciated anyways if you've made it this far i think it's fair to assume that you enjoyed this video so if you could do me a favor and drop a like, that would be much appreciated. Also, if you are not subscribed already, then do that. I'm trying to push out these higher quality videos as frequently as possible, and a larger viewer base gives me the time where that effort is more worth it. So it's much appreciated. Anyways, that is it. Goodbye.